Good morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome to our daily devotion this Tuesday morning, September 28. Today, we will be looking at John chapter 8, verse 36, and it says, So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. For the last 18 months, the country has been placed on varying levels of community quarantine. From the strictest ECQ to the least strict MGCQ, restrictions are everywhere. The kids cannot go to school but instead have online class and learning modules at home. The workers are limited to essential assignments. You go to a mall and you see various establishments that are already closed. Travel has to be essential. For my case, I did mountain climbing prior to pandemic. But the highest elevation I could go to for now is Antipolo or our office located mid-rise of a building in Makati. Would you consider yourself now at a state of limited freedom? Are you not free at all? In our text this morning, Jesus talks about how to be free indeed, with emphasis on the word indeed. Speaking to the Jews in John chapter 8 verses 31 to 32, Jesus mentioned, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. The Jews answered Jesus in verse 33, We are offspring of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say, you will become free? In verse 34, Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. That statement is intense, friends. It is something that any man, especially a self-righteous man, may find hard to accept, but at the same time, he can never deny. Jesus knows us better than we know ourselves because he is our creator. He is telling us here that everyone is a slave to sin. No one is exempted. Sin is not just a bad act, but a power underneath in our hearts that makes us do bad acts. There may be kinds of freedom that we can make for ourselves, but not this one. This slavery is too deep. Sin actually enslaves in two ways. First, sin enslaves by producing compelling desires. These are desires you most of the time do not understand why you have them and they are compelling. We act on these desires. Sin enslaves by making, making anything look more desirable than Jesus. The other way sin enslaves is that it eventually damns us. Unless something or someone intervenes, it leads to hell. But the good news is that Jesus frees us from sin's domination and damnation. He frees us from the damnation of sin by becoming damnation for us. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 states, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. Christ is the intervention we need. He also frees us from the domination of sin by changing our nature at the root through the new birth. The essence of this is that He gives us eyes to see that our Savior is more to be desired than anything in the world. When our sins are forgiven and God's wrath is taken away and we see Jesus as a greater treasure than the entire world, we are freed from both the, the damnation and domination of sin. Now we look at what full freedom is. What does it mean to be free indeed? Let me read to you from John Piper and it quotes, You are fully free when you have the desire, the ability, and the opportunity to do what will leave you no regrets forever. Close quote. If you don't have the desire to do a thing, you are not fully free to do it. But desire is not the only thing you need 
to be fully free. Because if you have the desire to do something, but no ability to do it, you are not free to do it. The same goes with having the desire and the ability to do something, but no opportunity to do it. You still are not free to do it. Alright, say you have the desire, the ability, and the opportunity to do something, but it destroys you in the end. Would you say you are fully free? It still is no freedom at all. Take for example, a zipline adventure. As leisure activities are limited now, you may not have the opportunity to enjoy this activity. Well, suppose you have the opportunity, but it is your first time to ride a zipline. You come unprepared. You do not know whether you need to sit or lie flat. You are unsure which part of the zipline supports you and what mechanism carries you from point A to point B. Would you still freely enjoy the experience? How about the moment you stepped on the platform, your knees start to shake and you cannot muster the courage necessary to let go? That definitely is not freedom. Now, say you are all set. You show your game face on and are ready to take the adventure. You give a smile to the staff to cue that he can now release you so that the ride could start. You enjoy the view. You strike a superhero pose because you feel you are you feel you, you are flying. You are like flying. Then suddenly, you notice some wild animals at the end of the zip line. Maybe some wild bears or alligators. You do not know what to do. You badly need help. Something needs to happen. Someone has to rescue you. See friends, our freedom is not based on what type of community quarantine we have. To be happy forever, our sins must be forgiven and God's wrath removed, and Christ must become our supreme treasure. Only Jesus can do that. He died for our sins, He absorbed God's wrath, and He rose from the dead and is today, therefore, supremely precious. Jesus is not just giving you information in this devotion message. He is giving you an invitation. Trust Him, treasure Him, He died and He rose again to make you free indeed. Let us pray. Lord, we praise You and we thank You for the wonderful word that You have given us this morning. Thank You for teaching us that in You alone, in Christ alone, can we find true freedom. We ask for forgiveness at times that we seek temporary pleasure here in this world that we feel like we already are free doing it. We thank you also for opening our eyes and making us know, making us remember that you alone are the source of our freedom. Father, I pray that we will value, we will put premium, O God, in this freedom that you have given us. And more so, Father, we pray that we will be able to share, to extend this kind of freedom to others, that others may come to know you also. Lord, we pray for the activities that we have for today. We pray for grace. We pray for strength. We pray that you sustain us. Lord, we pray that you will be blessed in our thoughts, in our words, in our actions today. We surrender to you every part of our day, every part of our life. Thank you once again for the freedom that you have given us. We give you honor and praises and thanksgiving. In Christ alone we pray. Amen. Thank you everyone again for joining our devotion this Tuesday morning. May the Lord bless and keep us all. Bye-bye.